I'm Amy DiPlacido. I'm the curator of exhibitions at SJMQT. And we started this residency in the fall of 2016, so I was on staff for that time, but I've only been leading this program for about a year now. I personally have a, a BFA, MFA, and I spent the first year out of graduate school actually attending some residencies. I had the opportunity to go to Art Farm in Nebraska, Art 342 in Colorado, the Vermont Studio Center, and the Brewhouse Gallery. That was a residency that was actually one year long which brought me to work at the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh. And I helped out with the tough art residency that's there. So through my background, I've seen that residencies can really play a pivotal role in the artist's trajectory. Um, you can find residencies all over the world and they can be medium specific. The shortest residency that I've heard of, about three days and the longest that I know of is a year. And you as organizers can really tailor the residency to meet your needs. There are wonderful ways for artists to express themselves and it gets artists away from the normal routine and distractions of life. So they're pretty popular. Artists like to participate uh, in these artists and residency programs because it usually incorporates some sort of travel or a change of scenery and immersion in different cultures or languages. And for the social aspect too, you can actually meet a lot of new friends at artist residencies and sometimes art, visual art and writing residencies intersect too. Here is a picture of some of the materials that we offer in our cabinet space as well. We review everything by committee. We're looking for diverse voices that are reflective of the Bay Area. And we do on the application ask if you have uh, teaching experience, which is helpful for teaching workshops, but it's not mandatory. And I've heard many residencies are actually waiving their application fee now due to COVID-19 as it's disproportionately affecting artists. But this is uh, a slide of everything that we're looking for, two letters of recommendation, and we always have no application fee as well. In our case, the residency offers really a view into the fiber artists at work. It's a three month residency and we have four artists each year and it can be one person or a collaborative group. We give the artists and residents 24 uh, seven access to the building and yes, this includes giving people access to our alarm code as well. So we often put a little trust into the artists that we work with. And they need to be present for three days a week, one of those being weekend days. We usually pop downstairs to ask for content for social media to see what they're up to and share with our network. And artists and residents um, can shift their schedule whenever we have um, first Fridays, which is when we're open late from seven to 10. We ask them to be present during our opening receptions and other events that we have at the museum. Um, during the residency, the workshop that they teach is just one and it's only two hours long. And it usually looks like a technique that they're using in their personal work. So in return, we um, as an institution give them $500 a month and that's over the course of um, three months totaling $1,500. And one piece does go into permanent collection. And this really diversifies our permanent collection. It emphasizes that we want to collect from Bay Area artists. And we think that this is a great line for artists to put on their resume as well, that they're now in our permanent collection. We really want um, to be supportive as we can to these artists that we work with. A little bit more about our space too. We really took an underutilized office space and transformed it into what we now call as the maker space. And this is also the same space that we have field trips and school groups. It's the only place in the museum where we have an industrial sink. So artists can use, um, you know, messier materials like dyeing or uh, wet felting. Artists can bring materials to use, but we really have a lot that's provided to them. A lot of artists choose to bring their own sewing machine, for example. We have one, we have uh, tables. We also have a lot of resource books um, in our library upstairs that artists can use. Um, they have this solo show in the hallway and as visitors come into our space, they really, you know, it takes like one or two minutes to walk down this hallway. So visitors can really start to formulate an opinion about the work and ask questions once they get to the end of the hallway uh, where the artist is at work. 
we want to support artists after they leave the residency as well. So we have uh, an archive on our website of the past artists and residents. We have links to their website and Instagram or wherever else they have their artwork. And um, we offer them an artist benefit membership after they leave too. Um, so if you are interested in more of who we've worked with in the past, you can go to the website and see everybody that we've worked with over the course of four years. And we have 14 artists right now. Whenever we first started the artists in residence too, we uh, started out with the invitation only and then we opened up to an application. Um, so artists were, that we're looking for are people who really want to have feedback on their work. Um, and we really want them to be dynamic as it's public facing. We really want them to say hello to every visitor that comes through the door. It's a nice departure. Um, since the artist experience is usually done in isolation, this is a way for artists uh, to who would usually be making at home anyways, for them to get a change of scenery and come in and uh, be a little bit more interactive with our public. It's a symbiotic relationship in this way. If artists even get stuck sometimes, I've heard that a lot of conversations that they've had with our visitors have really opened up new techniques or just got them out of a point in their making process where they were stuck in. Artists can talk shop, uh, grow their circle of supporters, and they've even made some sales on their own just by having these conversations. Visitors like to share what they think that their work is about too, but in this way, it really animates the artwork that is usually just stagnant and a piece on display in our galleries. This really brings the work alive. One thing that we're doing during COVID-19 is exploring the possibility of a digital residency. So stay tuned. We're going to try this out from October to December of this year. And we're going to try to take all the best parts that we like about the residency, the public facing part, the social media uh, part, and put them online or pre-recorded videos so people can start to see the evolution of a piece that an artist is working on um, and maybe still offer that workshop that we have as well. Uh, visitors can see how an artist is able mm -hmm. to pivot during COVID-19 and see if their space has changed if they're not at their studio space too. And so this is just a resource guide. If you guys are thinking about working with an artist residency program of your own, these are great places that I personally have found artists um, in residency or calls for art for that matter. Um, this I can also give to Sakwa if they wanna distribute this later. And um, these are some other reputable US artist residencies that we looked at for inspiration too. Um, I know a couple of these um, are in the Bay Area too, like Headlands, Montalvo, and Jurassi. And um, as I was looking and searching for fiber art focused ones, these are some other residencies that I found that either have fiber art facilities. And I'm sure if you called them up, um, they'd be willing to talk about their space and the interaction of artists and residencies too.